the blood of our people and your lands kept safe. I see in your eyes the same fear that will take the heart of me. So do all who live to see such time. All in all, I think this this episode has some good visuals. I actually do like a lot of the battle scenes. I think they're well shot. And something that people constantly complain about night battles, this one, it doesn't solve the problem exactly. We've seen the solution to this problem. Peter Jackson solved it 20 plus years ago. You just do a blue filter for your night scenes and shoot them in light and it looks great that that's how helms deep is shot it looks amazing it's still to me the best looking battle scene of all time mm -hmm. they solve the problem here by giving a lot of fire which brings light i like it it's a good solution to the problem of not being able to see you can't see anything in those game of thrones battle scenes this one at least you can see what's going on and i actually like the choreography here i like the fact that arondir struggles with this larger um orc uh I thought it was I thought it was well done. Um, heck, even Elendil gets taken down off of his horse and, and is almost killed, and Halbrand saves him. So, uh, yeah, all in all, I thought it was a really good battle scene. I just wish it was spaced out a little bit more with the previous episodes, um, because basically this whole episode was battle, or for the most part battle, and and then volcano. The problem is. It, it then is, it's kind of like a weird episode because you didn't get any like story. So now the next episode might just be all story with just characters talking and you don't get enough action. And that, sometimes that people start like daydreaming and they, they miss stuff. And so you then end up having these scenes that are very important that people completely miss because the, the show wasn't keeping them on, on the edge of their seat. Like, like having, throwing a battle in combined with a character struggling with something that's why peter jackson's films are such masterpieces it's not just battle for an hour at the end of the uh, the second two films it's intercut with frodo trying to do something or with a, um, other characters trying to do something and like it keeps you wanting more battle but then when you go back to the battle you're like oh but but frodo's also we need to get back to frodo to see what he's doing like he, it, it keeps you wanting more every cut and that's what i think this show is a little bit lacking of um but that's that's my thought i don't know if you have anything that you want to add there about just the structure of the show so far well i'm just i'm just uh, the fact that season two is a couple years away yeah. and we still have a lot to resolve in the next two episodes before the season is over do do you hardly... need so so i guess the question is do you personally need sauron to be revealed by the end of this season like no do you think it's sauron. okay to keep that mystery going or so i'm i'm conflicted personally i don't need sauron to be revealed because i'm already invested in the show but i can see people who are more casual viewers needing some progression there we need bigger clues. The Meteor Man, we know nothing about this guy, and we're almost at the end of this season. This guy doesn't even know who he is yet, it seems. And we're at the end of the season. So I, I can see people wanting some of these aspects to progress more than they have. Uh, we have two episodes left, like you said. Hopefully we do get closer to some resolutions. We now, we, we are now... I mean, I know people don't really like seeing the harfoots but i do like i do want to know i i want to know more about meteor man yes uh to figure out what's going on there and and we we brought in those cultists last yep. week too we, we didn't get anything out of them we yet. literally got them looking at the the impact crater from meteor man and that's it so yeah um i i'm with you like uh, on the one hand i don't really like the harfoots but on the other hand, the Meteor Man needs to be more present in this show. And we need more from him. He can't just be not knowing anything. Like, he needs to know things now. Um, it, it's time for him to, like, start showing us something more than magic ability and amnesia. Uh, yeah. 
it, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because they've kind of boxed themselves in with these Harfoots. The Harfoots don't know anything, so Medium Man can't even learn anything from them. So, yeah. like, the thing is, and this is something we don't see when, when Gandalf comes back, what is he like in those first moments? Does he have amnesia? Does he have amnesia? Does, does Treebeard tell him who he is? Like, you know what I mean? So, it's it's one of those things where the, the, the character has amnesia, the character, the, the Harfoots have nothing to offer. So it's hard to see how he's going to learn other than those cultists. So I'm hoping we do get like the cultists getting closer or at least maybe making contact with him um, because we need, we need him to start knowing about the great, the greater world at large. Maybe you can bring the, some of the Harfoots with him. I, I don't care. Um, cause we, we don't need all the Harfoots. Like we, we've had our fill of most of these Harfoots at this point. But we just, like, I think just Nori and Poppy are fine. Yeah. Everyone else we can get. Now, they don't even need to be in the show anymore. Now, yeah. Basically, same as the Shire, right? Like once we leave the Shire, we don't go back. We don't continue to see what, like, you know, what, um, the, the bar is like, what Rosie's doing. Um, uh, Yeah. We don't need to go back. We don't need to see what Sadak Burroughs is doing for the rest of the show. Now, just real quick before we before we end it here, uh, you said you wanted to see Nori and, and, and Poppy potentially go with Meteor Man. Do you see the comparison between Frodo and Sam and Nori and Poppy? And if so, do we think that that comparison is going to extend to the true reveal at the end of it all that... And this is something I have kind of been predicting a little bit. Poppy is actually the better of the two hobbits to help Meteor Man, not Nori. Hmm. Poppy is the I, one that's helped Nori's they're... family and has been the one trying to help Nori not get in trouble <laughs> with the Meteor Man. So I, say, I don't think it's quite a direct comparison to Frodo and Sam, but I, I can kind of see it being. Cause, yeah, because they're not on like this epic quest. Like they are. Because Nori's not all Frodo. Frodo's more reserved than Nori. Mm -hmm. Nor Nori's more like a Pippin, Pippinish. You're right. In a way. But it's it's almost like a Pippin Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is a weird, which is a weird grouping, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. Do so, they do they even speak to each other? I'm kidding. They, they for sure speak to each other. In the books, the books for sure they do. Like the, the I know they do in the book, but I don't the movie there's not there's it's Sam and Frodo have most of the interaction. You yeah. don't really see a lot of Sam. Mar Mary and Pippin have like a couple like so Mary Mary is the one that um after the Dark Rider passes them on the road, um, Mary's the one that goes, That Dark Rider is looking for something or someone and it's like a close up of Frodo. It's like I have to get to Bree. <laughs> it's like, oh, so they're looking for you? Okay. <laughs> but see, well, uh, I like that. I, that to me, that works. Last, last week, <laughs> I'm holding this mithril in my hand in front of you, but I do not want to break my oath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but see, to me, it works with Frodo, and it doesn't or, work or, there. <laughs> or there's a part where uh, Glorfindel... Glorfindel's like, yeah, we were using you to try to to figure this out, and then and then um, Elrond just said, so Durin was right. <laughs> and then Glorfindel's like, so do they have Mithril or not? I can't break my oath. <laughs> just saying, oh, so Durin was right. Yeah, that's breaking your oath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, it works with Frodo because Frodo is a hobbit. And it's got this level of innocence to it where it's like, I can't tell you what I'm actually doing, Mary. Just help me get to Bree. And Mary being a good friend is like, okay, no more questions asked. Let's get Frodo to Bree. Like, it, I like that that um, camaraderie there. But you're right. When it's, when it's your king asking you, do you know if the doors have Mithril? And then your first line is, I can't <laughs> tell <was> you. Right. <laughs> um, oh my God, Duraner's right. Duraner's right. I can't <laughs> tell you anything. Oh, so you did find Mithril, but you swore a blood oath that you can't tell me about it. Okay, I got you. Wink, <laughs> wink, nod, nod. But no, the king is dumb. And it's like constantly like, I just need you to be honest. Yeah, but do they have it or not? <laughs> <laughs> 
it kind of reminds me of that scene from Game of Thrones where the king is yeah, like, yeah. so you've seen my daughter and my brother in a brothel together. What does that mean? They, <laughs> what do you mean? I mean what does that mean? But they, they do that again with uh, the... the, the so, Cilla, this, Cilla Brimbor is asking him as well, yeah. No, no, but they do it again in Game of Thrones with um, Strong. I, I forget his first name, but the new hand. And he's trying to resign. And oh he's yes. Like, why? Why are you trying to resign? He's like, can you say it plainly? He's like, no, I can't say it plainly <laughs> because because everyone you'll, you'll execute you'll end up executing my son and my my grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> and then the king, the king is straight up like, well then I'm not gonna let you go because nothing happened. I'm like, wow, you are like the craziest, most laid back dad of all time, and. I mean, I'm one who always kind of liked and pitied Robert Baratheon, but damn, do I miss, like, Robert Baratheon would have at least been a bit more like, wow, what is going on in my kingdom? This king is, like, straight up, I don't care. I don't care about any of it. See no evil, hear no evil. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because, and this is why I struggle with that show, is that in a previous episode, when he finds out that there's a even a rumor that his daughter was sleeping around with someone he's like bring me your spy i'll take its eyes and it's like whoa he just went like insane for a second and now he's like yeah i don't care i don't whoever these rumors are nothing you can stay on as the hand i don't care yeah so yeah it that the king is really both kings like Gil, poor gilgalad they they kind of did him a bit dirty here because I, you know i think they're they think like the writers think that they've got this king well, who's got some plot because because Gilgalad needs to be likable by the yes, end. Yes, and he's he is, not. He is the hero in the original story. Yeah, and he's he, not he, likable here. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we need, he needs, uh, I think that's actually a harder task than Galadriel, because I actually can, I have some ideas as to how I would turn Galadriel um, back to the side of good. Gilgalad, I got nothing, because we don't get enough of him. He's literally a dick to everyone. He's dumb. His plans are nonsensical. And it's just, how do you make this character become the hero when he gets hardly any screen time? And when he does, it's something stupid. So uh, I'm worried about how they handle the Gilgalad and the, and the other elves. Um, Elrond, I can, like, I'm, he's already likable. I already he's, like this character. He's a, he, Elrond's extremely likable, like, as is Durin. Yeah. They're likable, they're likable characters. I mean, um, heck, I've even seen people who hated the idea of having uh, Disa. They like Disa as a character. They, they don't like the fact that, that, like, who she is and, and, like, the fact that she's in the story. But once they saw her on screen, she's a good dwarf. Like, she plays it yeah. well. The problem yeah. is, these characters are barely anything to the show. So, like, we've got these fun characters there, and we've got some fun characters like you and me. We like this idea, like, we like Waldrig. We kind of like this character, and we like the actor. But, like, these aren't the main, like, you need to make your other characters likable that are actually important to the story. You can't have all these side characters be fun. Like, I like Halbrand. I think he, I think the actor is starting to really bring it together for me. Mm -hmm. Um, He's got these shifty eyes. He's, uh, you know, he's both helpful but also holding something back. I think the actor's doing an okay job there, but he's nothing because he, he maybe he's Sauron, but like he's not like really. What I'm looking for at the end of this is to see how Galadriel and Isildur and Elrond and and maybe Durin come out of all of this. And especially Galadriel is way off the mark from where she needs to end up at. At least the other ones are almost there. Like, if nothing changes with Elrond, I'm still good with him eventually becoming the Elrond of Peter Jackson's movies. Like, it makes sense to how that character would progress. We do need a bit of a falling out with the dwarves, I admit, but he, he's basically at the level of of professionalism that I've come to expect from him. Um, and Elendil is just straight up killing it. Like, this is making me... I, let me let me say something and I might cut this and post it just this line. Elendil, the, the actor playing Elendil, is making me more appreciate the intro to Peter Jackson's films. Okay. Like that's how good I think this actor is handling the role and how good this character is right now. 
he's making me look back and see Elendil being um, hurt by Sauron and and making me appreciate that scene more than I did before, which is just, I did not think that was going to happen in the show. So I'm hoping we also get that with Elrond. I can see it coming because already Elrond has gone through some really good character progression. All we need is something with him and Durin to have him have a little bit of a falling out with the dwarves where he does end up almost in a twist where he's he is so mad that the friendship is ruined that he now overly doesn't like or doesn't trust the dwarves he doesn't it's not that he hates dwarves it's that he he has to end up not trusting them to do the right thing and that's mm-hmm. i can see that coming especially if durin is tricked by his own father or something i can see it all coming together so that like i think they're handling that area i know the lore is all broken but i think they're handling that storyline to get Elrond on track to be what we see in Peter Jackson's films I think they're handling it well um and that's really that's what I want at the end of it I want this to at least feel like the characters that do continue on they they feel close they don't have to be right on I know this isn't a Peter Jackson prequel but you can't just name these characters then have them end up being completely opposites that's just I don't think that's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's just about wraps it up. Um, yeah. If you guys like this, give it a like and uh, we will see you on the next one.